Hello and welcome to the Monday, January 23rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Friday we got a diary by Boyan. Boyan does a ton of pen tests and is summarizing some of the lessons that he learned from these pen tests one critical one being that you must configure proper signing in your windows authentication otherwise you will be vulnerable to relaying attacks and uh, he's sort of going over a couple of ways how you can figure out easily if you have signing enabled in your environment starting uh, with nmap which will help you doing that but then also for https and uh, for the active directory certificate services server how you make sure that uh, the http headers are configured correctly it's a brief uh, post but uh, still extremely useful and like i said that's something that uh, he runs into all the time as part of his pen testing uh, practice so uh, this is a very common configuration weakness not really always that easy to fix uh, throughout a larger network MailChimp, a company that is maintaining mailing lists for various organizations, was breached last week. And I didn't cover this. Usually I don't really cover breaches here unless there is sort of a wider lesson here. And well, that wider lesson now comes into play when it comes to MailChimp because FanDuel, uh, online sports betting website has disclosed that as part of the MailChimp breach, one of its mailing lists was breached. Now the information isn't really all that super critical. It's email addresses and names, no passwords or anything like this. Essentially their mailing list was leaked here, but the risk here is that this mailing list will be used for phishing. Whoever gained access to the mailing list knows that these are customers of FanDuel and uh, they could now use that information in order to send more targeted phishing emails. The same is likely true for other victims of uh, this uh, particular attack against MailChimp. I don't believe that uh, FanDuel was the only one. Actually, according to MailChimp, about 133 of their customers were affected by this particular uh, breach and audience data was lost, which I assume means names and email addresses. And well, Office macros is one of those things that just doesn't seem to go away. Last year, Microsoft made big strides in making it more difficult to execute Office macros, download it uh, from the internet. They then later also fixed things like zip files and ISO files that were used in order to smuggle uh, office documents with macros into networks and uh, not having them detected as downloaded from the internet. So uh, that was uh, patched uh, later uh, last year. But, uh, well, uh, attackers always find new ways in order uh, to bypass some of these controls. The latest uh, appears to be OneNote documents. OneNote documents uh, by themselves will not include any macros as far as I know. But the trick here is that OneNote documents may include attachments. And uh, so far, they kind of work like an ISO file that you download the one the OneNote document and then inside the OneNote document you have the Office document that then includes macros and the mark of the web the magic alternate data stream that's marking a file as being downloaded from the internet does not transfer to these embedded documents so the end effect is that macros can be executed again the user will still get warnings but well one reason why uh, microsoft clamped down on some of these macros in office documents is that uh, all these warnings aren't necessarily read or understood In the show notes, I'll link to a blog post by Trustwave that described this technique early December, but hasn't really sort of bubbled to the surface until a bleeping computer covered it late last week. And then in vulnerabilities, we have a vulnerability. Cisco rates high. It's a SQL injection vulnerability in Cisco's Unified Communication Manager's patches are available. 
And we have a little bit the tricky vulnerability apparently in KeePass in its default installation. An attacker has access to the XML configuration file, which could then be used to obtain clear text passwords. There's an export trigger that can be added. And well, by adding the right export trigger, these passwords are then being exported in the clear. KeePass disputes this vulnerability as being relevant uh, because if you have this kind of access, well, uh, then you pretty much also have access to the user's keystrokes. So there isn't really anything that you necessarily get uh, with this vulnerability that you couldn't get via other means. Tend to agree a little bit here with KeePass, but not uh, familiar enough with their product to really uh, estimate uh, how severe this is or if there's a vulnerability at all. So if you're using KeePass, you may want to take a look at CVE 2023-24055 and consider whether or not that's a problem for you. Maybe something that you want to audit, maybe you want to make sure that any uh, changes to that uh, XML configuration files are being locked and alerted on. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.